see you in God's house tonight. Welcome to South Asheboro Church of God for our Sunday night worship service. And I hope you came expecting something from God because he's the source of everything we have need of. Yes. Praise God. Good to see Sister Lois back. Been missing her. Right. You're, anytime you're out, we miss you. If you're, if you're Anytime you're out. Uh, as we open in prayer, let's continue to remember uh, Brother Floyd's mother in prayer. Uh, she's in that last uh, day. They said a couple, two to four weeks. So, but God knows. But pray for also pray for Sister Sandra. Uh, she's sick in her body. Also pray for her brother-in-law Richard. You know they said he's in transition. Also pray for. Uh, I want to lift up Junior, Sister Blanche's husband, in prayer. I want uh, Brother Albright to come up here in a minute. Want us to have him stand in for Junior. And uh, also I'm pray continue to pray for Sister Angela, Sister Valerie, and their family. Pray for Sister Taylor, Sister Jane, and uh, just continue to remember all those that. Uh, are out of church right now. We want everybody to get back in, but we want to do it safely. But be, be glad when we get this place back full again. Praise God. Will Brother Albright, if you'll come up and stand in for Brother Junior. We want to pray for him. He needs a touch in his body. He's, only God can do it, but we've seen him do it before, haven't we, Sister Blanche? Let's pray for Trenton. Yes, pray for little Trenton, uh, Brother Bogey's son. Okay, if we'll stand in and raise your hands so this way as we pray. by prayer. You know, that's what we just did. We prayed. And I hope you believed when you prayed. You. Paul to Timothy, to Timothy, 1 Timothy 2, verse uh, 1 and 2 said, I, second chapter verse 1 and 2 said, I exhort thee there for that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that may, we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Verse 8 says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Right. We're not to doubt. When we pray, we've got to believe what we pray for, that we might receive it. Praise God. Ooh. This time we'll get our ushers to come receive our tithe and offering. Ooh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Matthew, would you pray over this time of worship?
tonight. God richly bless you for your giving. Isn't it good to be covered by the blood? Praise God. This time we'll have Sister Amy come and lead us in our congregational. Lord, get you to stand with me tonight and stand up and sing a little bit. Um, we're going to sing about just a little talk with Jesus. I don't know what I'd do without him. I know you feel the same. Uh, if we didn't have him to talk to, I, I'd fall apart. I really would. I'm so thankful that we can call on him. Let's sing unto him tonight. Lift up his name. got problems, you got situations, take it to Jesus. He makes it all right. Praise God. At this time, I'm turning the service to our pastor, Brother Shelton. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come in and hear the Lord make things all right. Amen. Everything's better with the Lord. I'd hate to face anything in this life without Him. He's the one that gets us through the trials and the tribulations. We have those. We know according to the Bible we're going to have those times. But I'm glad that we can lean upon the Lord and we can trust in Him and He's a God that never fails us. Can you say amen? Now, let me remind you, and I know the home folks, thank you for being here tonight. Let me remind you that COVID is no more contagious on Sunday morning as it is Sunday night, as it is Wednesday night. I don't know why some folks think it's less contagious on Sunday morning. There's a better chance of getting it on Sunday night. You want me to preach something else? I guess I will tonight. 
Nevertheless, we're so glad for you being here. We, I, I concur with Brother Charlie. I'd be glad everybody just gets back in church. The church is essential. People say, well, Walmart's essential. Well, you can, you, you know, you can find a Piggly Wiggly. You can find, a, you know, a big lot. You can find somewhere to get something, a Dollar General. They got another one going up somewhere, uh, somewhere in Ashboro, I believe it is. And I thought, dear Lord, we're going to have another one. And uh, you can get bread and water and food in there and get whatever you need. But uh, the church is essential. And it's not any less on Sunday night. I ain't got time to preach that tonight. People know they ought to be in church. I, Pastor Orton had not say that to them. If you're a Christian, you know you ought to be in church. Is that right? You can be here. I know some are sick. When you get better, come back to church. Second Thessalonians tonight. Sister Lois, we're glad to see her back there. I love her. She's going through a difficult time. God's helping her. God will help us. Keep praying for Sister Blanche and their family. They're going through a trial. God's going to help them and see them through this. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 tonight. Love and appreciate you. No place on planet earth I'd rather be than right here where I'm, my feet are planted tonight. In the house of God. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. Begin reading in verse 7 this evening. Appreciate the candy that was brought to me yesterday, but I didn't get any of it. When you live with ladies, I like candy too, but I didn't get it. They got into it, and I don't think I've got anything left, do I? The bag candies, I didn't get any of that. Didn't even know it was mine. Sister, Sister Tina gave some and said, this is there's one for the Brother Shelton, the pastor. They never told me it was for me. They just got it. They brought it, and they got it. <laughs> it's all right, I guess. I'll find me something good sweet somewhere. Somebody bring me something. It's about time somebody bring me something sweet, some goodies. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. You can read it in verse 7. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight for this wonderful joy to be in the house of God. We pray for those that are here. I thank you for these faithful people, Lord. We thank you for those watching online tonight, those that are faithful to be online and watch those services. We pray for those that are sick right now. We've got some that are sick that are tuned in right now watching. They want to be in the house of God. We pray you'd reach out and heal them tonight. Send your word and touch them right now, God. Touch those in this, in this sanctuary tonight, God, and have your way. Help us for the next little while, Jesus. We stand in need of your touch as always. Can't do anything without you, God. I pray that our hearts and minds are prepared and ready for the word of God, Father, we'll give you the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. The Bible said, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then, once he's taken out of the way, then shall that wicked be revealed, that lawless one. We're talking about the Antichrist here. We know that the spirit of Antichrist is here. Look around. But the Antichrist is coming. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Can you give God a hand of praise tonight as you're seated? May the Lord add his blessings to his red word for the next little while. I want to encourage the, the church, the local church here tonight. I know that this election is, I don't know any other word to use than just a mess. But I don't want us to get so wrapped up and so entangled in this that we lose sight of what the Bible says. And the Bible says this world is not our home. Let's don't get, listen, I believe we ought to pray over this situation. I believe we ought to vote. I believe as Christians we ought to vote, vote biblically. But let's don't get so, there, there are Christians that are just falling apart over this. They're just, just shutting down over this. Let's don't get so caught up in that. Whoever goes in that White House, we have to remind ourselves, this world, I don't, I don't belong here. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. And the Lord's going to come for us. And rapture us out of this old world. Can you say amen? I want to talk to you now on that thought. The rapture of the church. The rapture of the church. 
We know today that there is a, a great deal of conflict and much confusion when it comes to the rapture of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that if Satan can confuse us about the rapture, then he's going to claim a great victory for himself. But we know, Brother Charlie made mention of it this morning about the blessed hope that we have. We know that the coming of the Lord is that blessed hope of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We look to this day with great anticipation. There should be excitement about the coming of the Lord. Something inside the church should be stirred up right now, uh, recognizing that we're getting closer and closer to that day uh, when Jesus is going to come for His bride. Uh, we know that Jesus, according to the Scripture, is going to come uh, and going to deliver us out of this old wicked world. Now, I know people say, well, you know, with what's going on in this election and, you know, if, if Biden gets in, this is going to be the end of the world. That's not going to be the end of the world. <clears throat> the end of the world is not coming until the Antichrist takes his place. Uh, but before he comes, we're going to be out of this world. Can you say amen tonight? So I believe as Christians, we should live daily walking in the Spirit of God uh, and we should live daily looking for the Lord's return. Did you realize before they get all this mess resolved, uh, did you realize we could be a hundred miles deep in heaven uh, praising God and celebrating and rejoicing uh, that we have made it home? I believe that a day just like today, any day now, uh, Jesus is going to come again. We're going to a place, there'll be no Satan over there. We're going to a place, Sister Blanche, there'll be no sickness over there. We're going to a place of no sorrows. We're going to a place, there's no COVID over there. Come on and say amen. Only the redeemed and Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost are going to be in that place where we are going. And it's all made possible because of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Somebody give him a hand of praise tonight because you love him and you're looking for his return. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. We're walking in the spirit and we're looking for the Lord to come again. I want you to notice and consider with me here tonight what's meant by the word rapture. We know if you go through the King James Version and you look through that Bible from Genesis to Revelation Nowhere will you find this particular word rapture in that Bible. Uh, we know that it's the, the best word that we have in the English language that we use uh, is the word rapture to express the view uh, concerning the coming of the Lord. That word rapture comes from a Latin word which means rapios, uh, which means to snatch away suddenly. Jesus said in John 14, one, verse 3, he said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, I, there ye may be also. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, he said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain uh, shall be called up together with them in the clouds uh, to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I thought about Brother Floyd's mother. Uh, they've sent her home and they've sent her home to die. They said she's got two to four weeks before she leaves this world. I thought, you know, the Lord could come before that two weeks or that four weeks. Uh, amen. And she'd be in glory land. Uh, and that family that's by her bedside, uh, they would all, those that are saved, uh, would go up together with her uh, as you and I will as the children of God. Second Thessalonians 2 and 1. The Apostle Paul said, Now we beseech ye, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. I want you to notice the three statements found in these three different 
verses here uh, or these three different books. He said, I, I will receive you unto myself. Then he speaks of being called up together with him uh, in the clouds. Then he talks about our gathering together unto him. I'm telling you, this is what's known by the rapture. It is the church. It is the bride, those that are blood washed, being snatched away suddenly out of this world by the Lord himself and gathering us to him and where he is. It is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, coming for his own. He coming for those that are blood washed, uh, those that have been redeemed by the blood, uh, those that are walking in obedience to his word, uh, those that are looking for his return. Uh, this is the rapture of the church. Uh, and when that happens, Brother Zach, uh, when that takes place, uh, the church is going to be out of this old world. Uh, we're going to leave all this confusion and chaos behind, uh, and we're going to forever be with our Lord. Can some Somebody give him a hand of praise in this house tonight. Woo! <laughs> so don't get so wrapped up. Don't lose sleep over all this taking place right now. Don't get so burdened down and bogged down uh, with all of this. Whether, listen, whether who you voted for wins or not, uh, I'm telling you when Jesus comes, we're winners. Uh, either way, can you say amen? I realize today that many people, there are many different views uh, concerning the rapture in this age. There are some church folks who don't believe there's a rapture going to happen. They say, well, if the word's not in the Bible, we just don't believe it. There are other people in the church today who, who believe uh, that the church is going to go through half of the tribulation. Uh, and at the halfway point, we're going to be raptured out of this world. There are others who believe that we're going to go through the entire tribulation uh, and at the end of the tribulation we're going to be snatched out of this world uh, only to turn around and come right back to this world. None of those things make any sense uh, and they're not scriptural. Uh, the Bible teaches us plainly. Uh, now I've told folks if you want to go through the tribulation have at it. But the Bible teaches us that the church uh, will not go through the tribulation, uh, but she's going to be called away out of this old world uh, before that tribulation begins. According to the Bible, the very nature of the tribulation uh, prevents the church from going through any part of it. The church, according to the Bible, is not looking for the wrath of God to come. Uh, we're not looking for the judgment of God uh, that's upon this world, that's coming upon this world. Uh, but we are looking for that blessed hope uh, which will be our deliverance uh, from the judgment of this old world. This is our hope today. Not only am I saved, uh, but I have a hope that I'm not going to have to go through that tribulation. I, I'm not going to have to face that awful judgment upon the world. Uh, but the Lord's going to deliver us. Uh, God is going to save us out of that tribulation period. Uh, and we're going to be in heaven uh, shouting and praising God around the throne uh, while all of hell is being unleashed uh, upon this wicked world. Somebody say amen. The Apostle Paul sets forth this doctrine in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. There he gives us a description of the rapture of the church. Then he goes on and it says in chapter 5 verses 1 through 3. He said, but of the times and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. He warns here of what's going to come upon this old world. There's going to come the time when people are going to say things are getting better. They're going to say peace and safety. 
You know why? You know why we're going through what we're going through? You know why people won't bite in that office? They believe he's going to bring peace. They believe he's going to bring unity among this nation, among all this going on right now. They're looking for that peace. They're looking for safety. But the Bible said when they declare that there's peace, when they declare we are safe, destruction suddenly and terror is going to come upon them and they are not not going to escape. But then he goes on to then give the church a, a hope here and a consolation a, as if to say this, brethren, a, when they say peace and safety, destruction's going to come upon them. A, but we as the church, a, you don't have to worry about the tribulation. A, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen here. A, you don't have to worry about the judgment a, that's going to be poured upon this world. A, why? Because we're not going to be here. A, we're not going to be on this earth I'm telling you that Jesus Christ is not going to leave his bride to go through that time of judgment we're going to be rescued we're going to be delivered we're going to be snatched away and we're going to be in our heavenly home somebody give him praise tonight hallelujah oh my God Jesus is going to come he said in verses 4 and through 6, But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. He goes on and says in verses 9 through 10, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ uh, who died for us, uh, that whether we wake or sleep, uh, we shall live together with him. Notice the apostle Paul said in verse 9 here, he said, God, speaking to the church, uh, has not appointed us to wrath. He's not talking this lost and dying world. Uh, he's talking to the bride. He's talking to the church. Those that have been redeemed by the blood. Paul said to those believers at Thessalonica, he said that you were children of the light uh, and that they were not appointed to wrath uh, but to obtain salvation uh, by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the word salvation that he uses here, uh, it does not mean the forgiveness of sins. Uh, these people that he's writing to, they're the Thessalonians. Uh, they're already saved. These are Christian people. Uh, they love God. They're living for God. Uh, he said uh, that we're not appointed to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He, he's not speaking there of a, a repentance of sins. He's not speaking there of confessing and making things right with God uh, when he uses the word salvation here. We know that if we're Christians, our sins have already been judged. Our sins have already been forgiven. Uh, and we've been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. But the word salvation that he uses here uh, carries the same meaning found in Hebrews 9 and 28. When the writer said unto them that look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin uh, unto salvation? When he appears here uh, and obtaining salvation here for the church, uh, he's not talking about being forgiven of sins, uh, but he's talking about a deliverance from this world. Uh, he's talking about a bodily deliverance uh, when we are snatched away, uh, when we are called away to meet the Lord in the air. I'm telling you when Jesus comes uh, he's coming for those whose sins have already been judged uh, at the cross who's already been forgiven uh, who's already been washed by the blood uh, and when he comes for us uh, he's coming with salvation uh, in other words we're going to be delivered uh, out of this old sin cursed world I don't know how you feel about it uh, but I'm telling you friend I'm sick of sin I'm sick of living uh, with sin all around us uh, I'm looking for for the day when Jesus comes and raptures the bride and calls us to come home. Somebody give him a hand of praise tonight. Hallelujah to God. 
I wonder if somebody feel like, like the writer when he said, even so come, Lord Jesus. Paul said, we've not been appointed to wrath. We're not going to go through this judgment. We're, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna be here when this world is being judged for her sins, but we're gonna be saved. We're gonna be delivered. We're gonna be raptured from the judgment of the Lord. This has always been God's principle of operation. In Genesis chapter 7, uh, we know that when God destroyed that antediluvian age, there with that flood, uh, He judged them, the Bible said, because of their wickedness. Because of their sins. I mean, uh, one preacher said that place was so rotten that a turkey buzzard, uh, when he flew over it, had to hold his nose. Mankind was so wicked. Mankind was so evil in that day. I'm telling you, before God sent that flood, uh, before God destroyed those people because of their sins, uh, amen, he didn't destroy it until Noah and his family uh, was safe on board that ark. And then only then did God cause the rains to begin to fall. I'm telling you, no matter how high those waters rose, amen, those on board that ark were always safe. They were above the rising waters. Genesis 7 and 1, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. Then in verse 16 he said, And the Lord shut him in. I'm telling you, friend, before God sent that judgment upon that antediluvian age, it was not until Noah and his family, they were saved, they were delivered, they were rescued. Then the Bible said when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, let me tell you something here tonight. i got to move on here, but let me tell you something. This, this wicked generation that's so bound up in homosexual sexuality and perversion and, and sins of this nature. Listen, you can vote in whatever you want to vote in. You can make law whatever you want to make law. But what God is called an abomination he is an abomination and God is going to judge it. Come on now. I said God is not going to let America get by just because we say in God we trust on our currency uh, if we sin against God uh, we're going to face the judgment of a holy God amen but God did not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah until first righteous Lot was delivered you know why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah it was because of their homosexual sins you think America's going to get by? You think this nation's just going to ride this thing on out and everything's going to be okay? God means what He says and He says what He means and He keeps His word. The only right that a homosexual has is to fall on their face and repent of their sins. And if they'll do that, they'll not live in that sexual perversion anymore. Come on and say amen. I'm telling you before He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, He waited until right just Lot and his family were delivered. And not until the restraining power of the Holy Ghost is taken away and the church is raptured from this world will God pour out his judgment upon this earth. I'm telling you, friend, the Bible said it's going to be a time like no other. You want to know what it's going to be like? Read through the book of Revelation. Find out what's coming upon this old world. These folks today are riding high in the saddle. They shake their fist in the face of God Almighty. Even church folks, come on now, that have gone worldly and compromised. You know, they, 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 in the face of God, they have no fear of God or His Word in this generation for the most part. I'm telling you, friend, God, He's not going to let them escape. He's not going to let it get by. After what He put His Son through on that cross, He's not going to let sin get by. The only hope for the sinner uh, is to repent of those sins uh, and get right with God and serve God but if we, if we neglect him uh, if we reject him uh, I'm telling you he's going to pour out his judgment uh, in the form of the tribulation uh, upon this world but thank God uh, I said thank God uh, we don't have to live in fear uh, we are men and women that have hope uh, and we're looking for that glorious day uh, when Jesus comes again hallelujah to God 
He's going to rapture us out of this world. We're not going to be here to go through that wrath. We're not going to be here to face that time of judgment. We have been forgiven of our sins. We are serving the Lord. The Bible said in that day, men's hearts are going to fail them for fear. They're going to be massive heart attacks around this world. They're going to see things come upon this earth that we have never seen before. Somebody said, boy, this has been a rough year. 2020 has been a terrible year. Let me tell you something. If the one who's ahead right now wins, 2021 is going to be worse. Nod your heads at me. I said 2021 is going to be worse than 2020. But right now, this is a picnic in the park, what we're going through here. This is a wonderful time considering what the Bible says is going to come upon this wicked world. I'm telling you, my friend, that cup of God's wrath, it is filling slowly day by day. Men think they're getting away with their sins. People think they're getting by. They think that nobody knows. Nobody cares. Nothing's going to happen. I'm telling you, the Bible said in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be changed. The church is going to be caught out of here. And while we're in heaven celebrating, while we're there glorifying God, I'm telling you, the devil having a great wrath uh, is going to come down upon this earth uh, and God uh, is going to pour out his fury upon wicked mankind I don't want to be here how about you I want to make sure I'm ready to go when that trumpet sounds today's the day of grace the time is running out people won't have to go to church now but when that time comes, I got a feeling some church is going to fill up with people because they're so afraid. But then I'm afraid it's going to be too late for many of them. Somebody said, well, I'm just going to get right. I got I to gotta move on here. I preached too long this morning. I'm not going to try to hold you so long tonight. But just bear with me for a little bit. People say, you know, I'll just, what if I miss the rapture, I'll just get right when the, you know, during that tribulation. I'm not so sure you can. In that day, God's going to turn them over. They're going to send a strong delusion that they're going to believe a lie and be damned. They're going to believe the lie of the Antichrist. They're going to believe everything that he says, and they're going to follow him. They're going to take that mark of the beast, and their soul is going to be damned for hell forever. Can you say amen? Listen, those that have, have just played around with God, those who've, who, who've just, just lived any kind of way that they want to, you wonder sometimes. You wonder why God lets people do what they do. You wonder why God lets it go on as long as it does. <clears throat> Isn't it good that we're not God? I mean, if we were God, we might be zapping people. Come on now. You live like, we might be killing people. But God's long-suffering. God's a patient God. I'm telling you, friend, the Bible said that he is angry with the wicked every single day. He's keeping a record of everything that's going on. Those things that are here in the darkness, he's going to bring them to light. Amen. Everything taking place right now. This world's living it up. They're hooping, hoorahing. They're having a good time and they're seeing. But I'm telling you, friend, there's a payday for the world. Wages of sin is dead. There's always a payday when it comes to sinning against the Holy God. I don't want to be here. I don't want my family to be here. I don't want your family to be here. I want to be ready when Jesus comes again. Hallelujah to God. It's going to be a time like the world has never seen before, nor will ever see again. I'm telling you, read through the book of Revelation. There's some scary things coming upon this old world. That's why today's the day of grace. Time is running out. The church age is a day of grace, a time of mercy, a time of long suffering. God never told the church that He was going to preserve that church through the tribulation. He never told the bride he was going to preserve her through the hour of judgment. He said in Revelations 3 and 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Then Jesus said in Luke 21 and 36, 
Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I'm telling you flat-footed according to the Word of God uh, that before that tribulation takes place, uh, before that Antichrist steps into power, you believe how you want to. I believe he's already here on this earth. I don't believe we're waiting for him to be born. I believe he's here now. We don't know who he is. But before he can step into power, the Holy Ghost is going to step back. The church is going to be raptured, snatched away, caught up out of this world. And the saints are going to be in heaven. We're going to be celebrating. We're going to be worshiping God. We're going to be magnifying the King of kings and the Lord of lords while all of God's wrath is going to be poured out upon sin and the sinner on this earth. You don't want to be here for that. You don't want to miss that rapture. Whether you're young or old, you don't want to miss that rapture and be left here to go through that tribulation period. If you're worldly, you'll miss it. I said if you're worldly, you're going to miss it. You can believe how you want to believe, but I believe the Bible says that this way is straight and this way is narrow. You can say what you want, but I would be scared to death. I'd be shaking in my tennis shoes. Pray for me. This looks so weird with my suit. Pray God will heal my feet. I would be shaking in my nice soft tennis shoes. Quit laughing at me, girls. I love them. I would be shaking in my shoes if I knew that I had gone back and picked up this world. That I had gone back and begin to pick up the things that I've laid down for God Almighty. The things that I laid down because I loved Him. The things that I laid down because I, I knew they were sinful things. I, the things that I laid down I, because I wanted to walk on with God. I, I'm telling you, friend, I, I'd be scared to death I, to pick this whole world back up. I, I'd be afraid I'd make myself a transgressor. I, I'd be afraid I'd be left behind. I, I'd be afraid to follow Jesus from afar I, or stand around a strange fire. I, it's not time I, to slow down. I, it's not time to drift. The Lord's going to come. I said the Lord's going to come. We need to leave Egypt behind. We need to fall in love with the Lord and be looking and ready when he comes again. Somebody give him a hand of praise tonight. My God, my God. Hallelujah to God. I'd be afraid. To pick this old world back up. Somebody said, well, sister so-and-so did. Well, sister so-and-so might miss the rapture. Are you going to miss it because of her? Well, brother so-and-so's doing that now. But listen to me, friend. Brother so-and-so might miss that rapture. Are you going to miss it because he does? Ain't no time to shortchange God. There's no time to take our salvation as just, you know, as a light thing. We better wake up out of our sleep. We better get serious about our service to God. We better get back in that book. We better start walking in the Spirit of God again. Get out of the flesh. Come on now. Salvation. Salvation gets us out of Egypt. But sanctification gets Egypt out of us. We need to get sanctified real good. We need to lay aside the works of the flesh. We, we need to walk on from those old carnal things in our lives, those things that hold us back from living for God and loving God. You say, Brother Shelton, I just don't believe. you got to live that way. Well, you walk on how you want to. But I like what Jeremiah said. I believe I'm just going to choose the old paths. I believe I'll walk therein. Come on and say amen. Somebody said, well, y'all are just old time, old fogies. You're living in yesteryear. No, we're not. We're just trying to live by the word of God. I said we're just trying to live by the book because we're looking for Jesus to come any day now. Hallelujah to God. You go ahead and pick that world back up. 
And I believe I'll carry my cross. And I believe one day soon I'm going to exchange that cross for a crown of glory. While the tribulation's going on here on this earth, the saints of God are going to be called out of this old world. And we're going to forever be with the Lord. I want you to notice here in the book of Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible said that John the revelator he's called to come up hither. And while he's there in the spirit on the Lord's day, the Bible said that he has shown the revelation of the things to come. You read the book of Revelation. That's the revelation from God to John, to his church. We know that John here is a type or representative of the church who is called up hither. And after the church has been raptured or called up hither, uh, the church is not pictured again on this earth. You go back and read the book of Revelations. Read uh, from Revelation chapter 4 to Revelation chapter 19. Uh, and everywhere you read about the church in those chapters, uh, the church is always seen in heaven uh, around the throne eternal. She is there robed in linen clean and white uh, with a crown of gold upon her head. Then we read of her again in Revelation chapter 19 uh, and we find her coming back with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I haven't been around horses a whole lot. I, you know, maybe been on a horseback riding maybe two or three times less than, a, less than probably I can count on one hand. Never rode a horse a whole lot. I remember when I was a little boy, my grandpa, he had two horses, Jody and Nellie. Jody was a brown horse. Nellie was a white horse. Nellie was sweet. She was just sweet as she could be, but Jody was mean. He was a mean horse. I, I remember he'd try to bite at you. And my grandpa put me on his back one day, sitting on that saddle. I, I, you know, I can't be more than five, six, seven years old, but I remember this. I, while he's just kind of walking me along and I'm just kind of trotting on that horse, I, he didn't get that saddle put on there real tight, and I just remember starting to slide off right underneath the horse. Good thing you didn't step on me. Good thing you didn't kick me. Never have been around horses. Not a big fan of horses. I, I know, you know, I, Josh and Becky, they love them to death. But I'm telling you, when we're over there in that glory land, uh, in Revelation chapter 19, the Bible said, uh, Jesus is going to mount up on that white horse. Uh, he's going to have a vesture dipped in blood that says King of Kings uh, and Lord of Lords. Uh, and, and the Bible said, Enoch said, uh, that he's coming with ten thousands times ten thousands and thousands uh, of his saints we're going to mount up on horses with him uh, and we're coming back to rule and reign uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ I'm telling you friend uh, if you're looking for peace on the land uh, there'll be peace all over this world uh, here in that millennial reign uh, everything's going to be holy unto the Lord hallelujah to God the Bible shows us Revelation chapter 4, when, when John is called up, he represents the church, the rapture of the church. Now as he begins to look back and begins to write about the things taking place upon the earth, he writes about the tribulation. He writes about what's taking place, the judgment upon this earth. But the church is not mentioned because she is not there. Go read it for yourself. Revelation chapter 4, he said, I was in the spirit of the Lord's day and I heard that, that voice from heaven saying, come up hither. There he saw the throne of God. And now God begins to give him the revelation. He looks back on the earth. He begins to write the things that are taking place of that tribulation. I, and I'm telling you, the church is not seen on this earth again I, until Revelation 19, I, when she comes back to this earth with Jesus Christ. I, that simply means I, she has been saved. I, she's been delivered. I, she's been caught up out of this old awful world. I, and she's going to be in heaven while the tribulation is taking taking place here on this earth. She's not mentioned again on this earth. Every time you see her from those chapters, she's always there in heaven. She's not here. Before that fourth chapter of Revelation, 
The church is mentioned 14 times and every time she's mentioned uh, she is here upon the earth but beginning in chapter 4 uh, the church is caught up uh, she is no longer here uh, God no longer deal for that church here on the earth because she's in heaven uh, in other words the Bible makes it clear that the church is going to be in heaven uh, while the tribulations taking place upon the earth so we ought to be excited we ought to be rejoicing. We ought to be celebrating. We know what's coming upon this earth. I'm telling you, we're going to be saved. We're going to be rescued. We're going to be delivered out of this tribulation. I told you recently that whatever happens with this election, dear God, don't let it tear your nerves up. Don't let it cost you sleep. I, listen, you know, I know who we voted for. Maybe I know who you did. I, you know, I hope I do. But and I'm telling you, you don't have to let all this stuff go on. I told you before this election, this may have to happen. Things may have to go this direction because according to the Bible, things are not going to get better. And when that tribulation comes, it's going to get worse. It's going to be magnified like anything other, any other event in the history of mankind on this earth. So don't get all caught up and all worried and all concerned and say, oh, dear God, it's the end of the world. Oh, no, it's not. We're going to be raptured out of here. The Lord's going to come for His bride. If you're blood washed, you're living right if you're walking in obedience to his word. I'm telling you, you don't have to be afraid of what's happening right now. You don't have to be afraid what the outcome of this election. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to say, oh, dear God, what are we going to do? What do you mean what are we going to do? We're going to keep walking in the Spirit. We're going to keep living for God. We're going to keep looking for the Lord to come. I'm telling you, friend. Whatever happens on that day, uh, that inauguration day, if we're still here, if the Lord hasn't come then, uh, I'm telling you the next morning we're going to get right back up. Uh, we're going to keep praying. We're going to keep reading our Bible. Uh, we're going to keep living holy. Uh, we're not going to pick the world back. Come on and say amen. I said we're not going to pick this world back up. Uh, I don't have a desire for that. How about you? Uh, I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that I'm sanctified. I'm uh, glad that I'm Holy Ghost baptized. Uh, we're living our lives looking for Jesus to come somebody give him praise tonight hallelujah to God the best is yet to come for the children of God so let Biden and his son Hunter both get in that office let this country go socialist let all that take place but this world's not our home so don't worry about it you just keep living for God you just keep serving the Lord. You just keep being a light in the darkness of this world. And I'm telling you, just in that moment of time, we're going to be gone from this whole world. We're going to leave all of this behind. Can you say praise the Lord tonight? This is the rapture of the church. We're going to be in heaven the devil can get the church looking for the rapture, the tribulation. That becomes our focus. If he can get our attention so wrapped up in what's going on at the White House right now, if he can get us so caught up in all the things that are taking place, and I'm going to tell you something right now. We're going to get ready to pray. Sister, come on, get ready to play and just hold on one minute. It makes me mad to watch people go in Dollar General and just loot. Oh, how sorry. Go into a Dollar General, go into a Walmart, drive up, get out of your car, walk in, know you ain't paying for nothing, just fill your car up. Yeah, they're Christmas shopping for nothing on your tax pay, your taxes and mine. I don't like that. That makes me mad. I thought you sorry things. If you'd get your job, you wouldn't have to go steal like that. Go get your job. You ain't got time to burn your cities down. Now, if you're working like you're supposed to, you're going to be too tired to try to bust windows out and burn the city down. If you need a job, ask Brother Zach. They'll get you a job. Over there. They'll, work. They'll kill half. Most of them couldn't do what you do, Brother Zach. They'd be dead in two days. He said, he said he's having to use his left arm right now. I said, well, dear Lord, that left arm's bigger than the right arm. I feel sorry for that sheetrock. 
and ain't got a chance. He's, this, this generation, that makes me angry when I see people just destroying things and tearing things down, just stealing, just, just hard as they can go. What makes me more mad is that the police don't have any authority over it. When I was young, if you stole, they'd lock you up. That's right. When I was young, if you stole, they'd come and get you and take you to jail. Now they just, they, 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 you know, they're not letting them do anything. They just have to stand there and watch them do it. I told somebody they ought to put snipers out there with rubber bullets. Rubber bullets. This Tracy didn't kill the nose. Rubber bullets. And just pop every one of them while they come out of them stores. They'll drop them TVs. You should have enough rubber bullets. They'll, they'll drop that. Yeah, they'll drop all those things. I'm not saying hurt them or kill them. I'm just saying just open fire them with rubber bullets. They'll think twice about going to that store. Is that right? I would. I don't want to get shot by something like that. Set up rubber tasers. Just taser every one of them. They come out. Just fire them up. Light them up. Leave it alone. It's not yours. Don't tear it down. And I'm telling you, I, I, I certainly believe that if this election goes the way they want it to go and the way they think it's going to go, they're going to all of a sudden say we're all singing kumbaya. We're going to lock arms together now. We're going to all be friends. Everybody's going to get along. The rioting's going to stop. The looting's going to stop. They're going to stop burning their cities down. But the Bible said when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction's going to come upon them as a woman in travail with child. But before that happens, listen, all of this has to fall into place. Things have to fall the way they're falling, the way it's going. I believe it has to fall this way. God's getting us ready to get us out of this old world. And then this world is going to be ushered into that awful time. If the devil can get the church focused on all this stuff going on, if he can get us so wrapped up in this rather than the rapture, he's going to destroy the blessedness of our hope. If, if I'm gnawed up inside because of what's going on right now, it ought, to, it ought to cause us to have a burden. I'm not saying that. It ought to cause us to have a burden for the lost. We ought to want to win souls more than ever. We ought to try to work hard to win souls now more than ever. But if I get so caught up in all that mess going on out there, I, I'm going to lose the joy of my salvation, the joy of walking with God, the hope that I have I, that I'm not going to be in this old world forever. The Lord's going to come for us. The enemy hates the doctrine of the imminent return of the Lord. The word imminent means he could return at any time. He could come at any time. There are no more signs that need to be fulfilled. Jesus can come for the church right now and do no violence to his holy scriptures. According to that Bible, Jesus is going to come. We're going to be spared from the judgment. We're going to be spared from the wrath that's coming upon this world. So let me encourage the church tonight. Stay the course. Stay sharp. Let's stay focused on God. Let's stay prayed up, paid up, ready to go up when Jesus comes again. We're not, we're not going to get caught up in everything taking place. Let the church be the church that will walk in the power of God. Live her life looking for Jesus to come. And for those that are going to be left here, we better warn them loud and clear. We better make them know that what's coming. Friends, you better get right with God. You better get your heart right with God. You better live your life for the Lord. You don't, you don't believe that. Just read in Revelations what's going to happen on this earth. I don't want to be here. How about you? Let's stand all over this house, please. I don't want my family to be here. I don't want your families to be here. I don't want anybody young or old or anything in between to be left behind. I want us to be ready for that rapture. I want to be ready when Jesus comes again. People say they believe we're going to go through half the tribulation. I don't, I don't know where they find that in the Bible. I don't find that in the Bible. What's the point of that? Why would we have to suffer half of it then to be caught up? That makes no sense. Some people don't believe there's a rapture at all. They don't believe that. They, the church people don't believe there's a rapture. Some folks think we're going to go through all of that judgment only to be called up, turn right around, Lord say, come, we're going right back. That makes no sense. We're going to be spared from that wrath. This is the hope that we have as Christians. 
I want us to come pray tonight if you're able. Put your mask on, please, if you want to pray at your pew. Let's pray and make sure we're prepared and we're ready. Let's pray for the lost tonight. Let's pray for the backslider. Let's pray for those that are lukewarm, that just play around with God. They're not sincere in their faith. Let's pray for those who's picking this world back up.